Generated by the Guerrilla Girls in 1988, these statements easily summarize the disadvantages of being a modern female artist. Women have been required to be submissive, generally serving domestic jobs, caring for the home, and raising children. Women, expected to be delicate, pious, and domestic, were often denied exhibitions and gallery representation based on the fact that they were female. Art was a man's world. Feminist pioneer Judy Chicago stated, Whereas men experience presence in our art institutions, women experience primarily absence, except in images that do not necessarily reflect women's own sense of themselves. That was until a certain movement spurred in the late 1960s, the feminist art movement. Described by art critic Blake Gottnick as the most important movement since World War II, feminist art was not just a stage in art history, but a wholesale shift in the way of doing things. Feminist artists played with ideas of gender, identity, and form. The feminist art movement explores a new definition, or lack thereof, of what it means to be a woman. They explored ideas of womanhood and domesticity, new forms of art, and a new art world, one that was inclusive to women. Each piece was an exchange within itself. With every new piece of art came a new idea that would be communicated to the viewer. The movement was spurred by the many women who encountered not only rejections from galleries and museums, but also in everyday life. The second wave of feminism began in the mid-1960s and continued until the 1990s. The wave unfolded in the middle of the anti-war and civil rights movements. This phase began with the protests against the Miss America pageant in Atlantic City in 1968. The protesters considered this program as a cattle parade, which made women objects of beauty and delicacy. They said the program was dominated by male patriarchy that sought to keep women working in their homes or in low-paying jobs. A group of radical feminists in New York called the Red Stockings staged a counter-pageant in which they crowned a sheep as the new Miss America and then through oppressive feminine articles such as bras, girdles, makeup, high heels, and false eyelashes into the trash. Since the wave was founded in the middle of so many other movements, it is and was considered a less pressing issue than the Black Power or the anti-Vietnam War movement. Feminism is the radical notion that women are people. Feminism or feminist theory is rooted in the support of equality between women and men. As described by Kathleen Hanna, there's just as many different kinds of feminism as there are women in the world. Feminine theory questions the differences between women, including race, class, ethnicity, sexuality, and nationality. Each approach includes working to increase equality, expanding human choice, eliminating gender roles, ending sexual violence, and promoting freedom. As the second wave blossomed, so did females need to be included in the world of art. These female artists, desperate to verge from the common and historically male-dominated precedent that painting and sculpture carried, embraced alternative media through incorporating fabric fiber, performance, video, quilting, mixed media, and photography into their art. Two women in particular funded this movement. Miriam Shapiro and Judy Chicago worked together on Woman House, a series of performance pieces that acted to counter the harsh role of women as a domestic housemaker. With Chicago, Miriam Shapiro also worked independently as a New York-based abstract expressionist field painter. She was notoriously known for her unique style of Fimages, a creation described as the combination of paint and fabric. Each composition included a theme that pertains to a women's sphere of culture and life, her co-worker and companion, Judy Chicago, also served as an extremely influential and well-known artist. With the help of five others, she created The Dinner Party in 1974, a monumental multimedia project. It is known as one of the most significant pieces of the movement. It is a triangle configuration made of a plethora of different techniques, the 13 plates on each side honor either a goddess, historical figure, or important woman. The table stands on a porcelain floor formed by 
23,104 hand-cast tiles engraved with the names of 999 other important women. Another active feminist artist, and perhaps the most well-known, is photographer Cindy Sherman. Popular for her wide range of staged photographs of herself, Cindy Sherman is famous for black and white photographs of her posed in different stereotypical female roles. Through this series, she defines gender as an unstable and constructed position in order to suggest that there's no innate biological female identity. Sherman's untitled number 132 and 138 represent a victim of fashion, and though she is dressed attractively, she does not look attractive, but rather uncomfortable from the pressure of her forced role. Graphic designer Barbara Kruger is known for photographs layered with aggressive text. These captions speak to viewers in the struggle for power and control. Her trademark was black letters with a red background. Her art usually questions the viewers about feminism, classicism, consumerism, individual anatomy, and desire. Like Kruger, Jenny Holzer also used aggressive text in her neo-conceptualist style. She was famous for using this thought-provoking text in public places. Most include slogans such as, Protect me from what I want, Raise boys and girls the same way, and the abuse of power comes as no surprise. Suzanne Lacey's goal of feminist art was to influence cultural attitudes and transform stereotypes. She did multiple public protests against crimes against women. In mourning and de rage, the protesters could be heard chanting, Martha Rossler created a six-minute video demonstrating culinary objects alphabetically. More importantly, however, she demonstrated how each of these objects could be used violently and were difficult and uncomfortable to use in order to symbolize women's discomfort in being locked into these roles. As collaboration increased in popularity, a group of anonymous women known as the Guerrilla Girls assembled in 1985. This group protested the sexist attitudes and actions of the art world by assembling together and wearing gorilla masks, carrying signs, and handing out flyers. In 20 years, they have produced over 100 posters, stickers, books, printed objects, and actions that expose sexism and racism in politics, the art world, film, and culture at large. Lynn Hirschman used her art as social commentary, and especially commented on the relationship between people and technology. She even went so far as to create an alter ego, whom she named Roberta Brightmore. To complete her transition, she used weights, clothing, and makeup to fabricate a personal backstory, driver's license, credit card, and psychological drama. Mary Beth Edelson created a collage appropriating The Last Supper by Leonardo da Vinci with heads of important women collaged on the faces of Jesus and his disciples in order to challenge male authority in religion and art. Placing Georgia O'Keeffe on the head of Jesus, Georgia O'Keeffe was an American artist named the mother of American modernism for her well-known paintings of enlarged flowers. These female artists wanted to prove that they had every right to show their work in big galleries as the male artists did. Much of it was meant to be offensive so people would pay attention to it and confront inequality, past wrongs, and present-day wrongs committed against women. The feminist art movement was able to legitimize performance, media, conceptualism, body art, and video as professional art forms. The new appearance of women on the art scene awakened the art to new voices. Because of this movement, women artists today are no longer afraid to enter the art world, enabling them to succeed and fulfill the hopes of the artists of the feminist movement over 40 years ago.